Charlotte Hall Museum. Um, this is our printing office. As you can see, it's a little bit of a mess. We're kind of doing some remodeling and some changes right now, but we'll give you a quick tour nonetheless. Um, wish you could come in here and be here in person, but with COVID, we're all social distancing. Right now, we've got a Dutch door blocking visitors from coming in. Let me start by introducing you to the centerpiece of our museum, our iron hand press. This is a Washington hand press from our home company in New York. It was made in 1868, um, sold to the Sacramento Bee. This is an imperial number five, so it can print a full-size sheet of newsprint on the, with one pressing. So we can print this full sheet. In fact, this sheet here is the 1875 Sacramento Bee that was printed with this press. Um, this was, they had two of these presses. They had 5237, I think 5238, might be 5236, but two sequentially numbered ones um, where they would print the front side and the back side of that four page daily. But so this is kind of a neat thing to see a hundred, almost 150 years later, the page that came from the press. Um, we still print with this regularly. We're frequently printing um, posters and Christmas cards and all kinds of stuff with our iron hand press. One of the favorite things at Charlotte Holly Museum is when we do living history and we have our festivals. Um, usually we have all kinds of kids who are in here and they love to pull the handle and pull their own prints on the iron hand press. Um, if they're really little kids, I usually have to help them and so we give that handle a push and they just love doing that. Our oldest press and rarest press, this is a Cincinnati type foundry non pareil made between 1867 and 1873. As far as I know, there are two of these left. If anyone knows of another, I would love to know about it. There's this one, and there's half of one of this at my house. It's missing the flywheel. The treadle is an aftermarket homemade treadle. Both of them are missing the treadle. But I'm going to get that other one working as well. So um, what is really interesting about this press to me is that the way it, it works, this is much like a Colts Armory Universal. Basically, as it closes with the not Cincinnati non um, it pivots and closes with a parallel impression. So if you watch, as that closes, you'll see it go straight up and down before it does the last closing. So that parallel impression, that's something that the Colts Armory and Universal prided themselves on and a lot of people think it's the first press that did that, but this one does it too. So this press does work. We're getting ready to overhaul it and rebuild it, um, repaint it, make it all pretty and shiny. So which brings me to one of our other presses. So this is our 1906 Chandler and Price, eight by, um, eight by 12 um, printing press, old series. This one um, is our workhorse. This is probably what we do most of the work in our printing office. We're not doing poster size stuff on the large hand press. This particular press, some people around the country saw this when they were out in Arizona for the APA conference a few years ago. Sky Shipley rescued it from here in town. An old printer had his mailbox nailed to the beadboard and had it sitting out there for a couple of decades rusting away. Sky rescued it from him, took it to his house, sat for a Sky's house for several years. Him and I did the full restoration of it. We rebuilt it, and I bought it from him, donated it to the museum, and now it is doing what it should be doing, it is printing here local Prescott history yet again. So, definitely a nice press to have in our shop. Um, one of our other presses is, we've got an Excelsior hand press. This one's here temporarily. I'm working on a Dowaday modal press um, to replace this one. I'm doing a restoration of that, but no, more, more presses than we have space for. So here you see a 19th century standard open rack newspaper um, workstation. So if you're standing to case and setting type, this is where you were working around the turn of the century, which is our time period. This one's been re restored a little bit. The, someone's built drawers into it, um, which 
It provides us extra storage, which is really useful. But the main thing that I like having this shot, besides the fact that it shows where type was set, is it lets me tell the story of type cases. These aren't drawers, they're not sliders, they're not boxes, these are type cases. And I always make an emphasis to that because this is what people remember when they visit. This is the uppercase. It has a set of regular caps and a set of small caps. 19th century, the uppercase had two sets of capitals. That's what you used. Then your lowercase had your small letters. This is the lowercase. So uppercase and lowercase letters. People around the country know this and don't know why. This is it. This type case lets me, this type cabinet lets me illustrate why we call them uppercase and lowercase letters. It's probably the number one thing people remember from a visit to the print shop. That and minding their P's and Q's. I always ask the kids, which is which? P's and Q's. Types upside down and backwards. It's hard to tell. They look at it. They argue about it. Usually one will decide and then I'll reveal it. No, the Knicks were up. So these are actually B's and D's. So another fun thing we do in the print shop. Let's see, what else can I show you? We've got, you know, just odds and ends, just little bits of stuff here and there. One object that's kind of fun is stashed back here in the corner. And this is my 1895 card trimmer. This is a dandy from the Milton Bradley Company. If you look close, you can see Milton Bradley Company. This is what everybody's favorite board game company patented and came out with. This cutter was patented by Milton Bradley. That's it. When you're using it, when you're playing the games, this is what they started as, as printer's tools. And so that one, I had to get just so I could tell people what the story of it was. Um, got miterers, paper cutters, cornerers, we've got furniture, we've got wood type. So a fan favorite in our print shop is our enclosing stone. Um, it's actually a gravestone um, that was found in a newspaper office in New York State. Uh, Jim Babbitt took it home with him and put, made it part of his collection and a couple of years ago he donated it. Uh, the gravestone says Mary Round. Wife of Oliver Round died July 12, 1864, aged 56 and four months. Um, our visitors often ask, well, how did we get this in the first place? And there's two possibilities. Um, Mary either got better, maybe she wasn't that sick, or there was a typo. And through our research, we did find out that it was a typo. So her name is actually uh, Mary Rounds, not Mary Round. Was missing the S. Just a little fun fact from Charlotte Hall Museum. So what we're working towards, I'll show you here. This is one of our projects. This is a form for the Arizona miner, the first edition, first issue of the paper that was printed here in Prescott in 1864. So it's a this is known as a half sheet. The B was a full sheet paper. So with the minor, because it's a half sheet, we could actually print all four pages at once. And then we have to flip the paper around and print the other side. So we could, and then we have to cut them. <laughs> so we could do a one sheet, four page, half sheet paper um, in our pressing. And that's what we're working towards. But we've got the front page done thanks to Sky Shipley at Skyline Type Foundry. He set the form on in the line of type for us. And I was a little skeptical, but it looks pretty good in print. In fact, here's our first proof of the minor. Still has some th corrections to make, but this is where we're working towards.